Welcome to the fifth video in our series on standard costing and variance analysis. In this video, we will be focusing on variable overhead variances. As we work through these variances, make sure you look out for the similarities to the materials and labor variances we have seen in the preceding videos. So what are our learning objectives for this video? As with our previous videos, we first want to be able to identify the different variable overhead variances that we have. We then want to be able to calculate the different variances. And finally, we need to be able to identify potential reasons for the variances. To begin, let us quickly recap our example for the series. We have a company manufacturing widgets, and the standard cost card is presented on screen. For this video, we'll be focusing on the variable overheads. Notice in this example that the cost driver for variable overheads is the direct labor hours. Also, we only appear to have one cost driver, so it is most likely that we are using a traditional plant-wide allocation rate. Again, if we focus on the variable overhead, we see that we budgeted 50,000 hours at 5 Rand per direct labor hour. Always pay careful attention to the cost driver. For the variable overheads, under the actual information, we are only given the total value of 232,800 Rand. The final slide provides us with no additional information on the variable overheads. Now let's consider the variable overhead variances we can get and how they compare to our material variances. On screen are the material variances we discussed in an earlier video. Now what variable overhead variances do we get? First, we get our total variable overhead variance, which is the difference between our flexed budget from our second video of the series and our actual variable overhead expense. You should not be surprised, but this variance is based on the same principles as our total materials variance. We then get our variable overhead expenditure variance, which arises when the actual expenditure differs from the standard expenditure. In essence, this variance is the same as our material price variance. Next, we have our variable overhead efficiency variance which considers how much of the cost driver we actually worked compared to how much of the cost driver we should have worked. This follows the same principle as our material usage. For the variable overhead expenditure variance, while we can calculate a joint expenditure efficiency variance, we need to consider whether it will be useful or not. For variable overheads, it is unlikely to be useful. Remember, the joint price usage variance for materials and labor is useful for performance management when different departments are responsible for the different elements. For variable overheads, however, the production department will be responsible for both the efficiency and the expenditure. Therefore, we will not calculate a joint expenditure efficiency variance. For variable overheads, it is highly unlikely that we will have a mix and yield variance. If we are using a single variable overhead rate, then we simply won't have a mix and yield variance. If we have different variable overhead rates per activity or per department, then it is unlikely that the overheads are interchangeable. For this reason, we will also not calculate an equivalent for the mix and yield variances. Now let's begin with the variable overhead expenditure variance. Remember, this variance is equivalent to the material price variance. Pause this video and give it a go. See if you can calculate the variable overhead expenditure variance. So, like a price variance, when we determine the expenditure variance, we need to compare what the variable overheads should have cost to what they actually cost. In this case, we see that it should have cost 5 Rand per direct labor hour. But how much did each hour actually cost us? To calculate this, we need to take the actual cost we were given in the scenario of 232,800 Rand 
and divided by the actual labor hours of 48,500. This gives us an expenditure of 480 per direct labor hour. This means that we spend 20 cents less than we were supposed to. If we spend less, it is favorable. So we now know that the expenditure variance is 20 cents per direct labor hour. But we need the variance for all the labor hours in total. So we need to ask now, should we use the actual or budgeted quantity of labor hours? We use the actual quantity because this is what we save the 20 cents on. So our expenditure variance is the 20 cents multiplied by the actual quantity of 48,500 hours to give us a favorable variance of 9,700 rand. Now, an alternative method to calculate the expenditure variance, which some of you might prefer, is to simply use the total values. The expenditure variance is the difference between the flexed expenditure based on the actual cost driver and the actual expenditure. So we have our two normal questions. What should variable overheads have cost, and what did they actually cost? Here, the actual cost is easy. It is given to us in the scenario as 232,800 Rand in total. For what it should have cost, we cannot use the 250,000 per the budgeted income statement. Remember, we need to flex it for the actual hours used. Pause this video and give flexing the amount a try and see what you come up with. Okay, so it is actually quite easy. We simply take the 250,000 Rand per the budget divided by the 50,000 hours also per the budget and multiply it by the actual cost driver of 48,500 direct labor hours to get a cost of 242,500 Rand. Now we can simply take the difference between what it should have cost and what it actually cost to arrive at our variance of 9,700 Rand favorable because we spent less than we should have. Now pause the video again and give the journal entry a try. Let's see what you come up with. Okay, so let's start with paying for the overhead. What is our basic journal? We debit our variable overhead control and we credit a bank. How much should we debit and credit with? Let's start with bank. We simply ask how much leaves our bank account, which was the actual amount we paid, which could have also been broken down as the 48,500 hours multiplied by the 480. Now let's move on to the variable overhead control account. Remember, it must be recorded at the standard. So we take the 48,500 hours multiplied by the standard expenditure rate of 5 Rand to get 242,500 Rand. Now we have a balancing figure, which is our expenditure variance. This is because only our expenditure has varied by the 20 cents per hour. The number of hours has remained constant. And we see that we end up with a favorable variance. It is favorable because it is a saving and on the credit side. Now let's consider the reasons why the rate may have changed. The variable overhead expenditure variance on its own is not very helpful. This is because it is usually a combination of several underlying items. So, other than considering inflationary and other price changes, the various underlying components of the variable overheads will need to be analyzed individually in order to understand why the expenditure variance has arisen. Let's move on to the variable overhead efficiency variance. This variance follows the same principles as the material usage variance. Pause the video and give it a try. Great, so hopefully you have your answer. When we determine an efficiency variance, we need to compare how much of the cost driver we should have used to how much of the cost driver we actually used. 
Remember, in this example, our cost driver for variable overheads was our direct labor hours. So, as we saw in our labor variances video, we should have used 45,000 hours, being the 9,000 widgets produced at 5 hours per widget. We actually used 48,500 hours. This means that we used 3,500 hours more than we were supposed to. If we use more, it is unfavorable. So we now know that the efficiency variance is 3,500 labor hours. But we need a RAND value. So we need to ask, should we use the actual or standard expenditure? Because variable overheads are already recorded at the standard in the variable overhead control account, we use the standard expenditure of 5 RAND per direct labor hour. So our variable overhead efficiency variance is the 3,500 labor hours multiplied by the standard expenditure of 5 RAND per hour to give us an unfavorable variance of 17,500 RAND. Now let's think this whole thing through in terms of a journal entry. What is our basic journal? We want to debit our work in progress and credit the variable overhead control account. Let's start with our variable overhead control account. How much is leaving this account? It is the 48,500 hours at the 5 Rand per direct labor hour to give us 242,500 Rand. Now what goes into our WIP account? Remember, we need to record it at standard, so we use the standard quantity of 45,000 hours at the standard rate of 5 Rand per labor hour to get 225,000 Rand. The difference now is our efficiency variance. Why? Because the rate has stayed constant, but the efficiency has varied. Now let's consider the reasons why the efficiency variance may be different. Again, take a moment to pause this video and see what reasons you come up with. And then we will go through a few ideas. For the variable overhead efficiency variance, we will have the exact same reasons in this example that we had for our labor efficiency variance. Why is this? Will this always be the case? Let's start with the first question. Why are the reasons for our labor efficiency and variable overhead efficiency the same? This is because labor hours are the driver of our variable overheads. So whatever affects our labor hours will also affect the efficiency of our variable overheads. Now our second question was will this always be the case? The answer here is no. It depends on what our cost driver is. So if our cost driver is labor hours, then the reasons for our variable overhead efficiency and our labor efficiency will be the same. However, if our cost driver is something different from labor hours, then our reasons will not be the same. Let's wrap up this video with a summary of our variable overhead variances. Remember, in our second video in the series, we calculated our overall variance. Based on this, we know that our total variable overhead variance is 7,800 Rand unfavorable. Based on this video, we know it is made up of our expenditure variance of 9,700 Rand favorable and our efficiency variance of 17,500 Rand unfavorable. That brings us to the end of our video on variable overhead variances. In our next video, we will look at our fixed overhead variances. See you next time.